to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the t- 2003 rom com Deliver Us from Eva with our returning guest, Anwar. Hello. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. It's fun. We're so excited for you to be back. We love your hot takes and and everything <laughs> you bring every time we are on the on the podcast. So can't wait. Yeah, I love to say what everybody else is thinking that they won't say. <laughs> <laughs> love it. And if you are just tuning in and you didn't listen to our previous teaser episode, stop, pause, and go listen to that. And we'll wait for you. (laughs) But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. Sorry, I went too fast. I, 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 I never know anymore because I think when you hear it later, it like sinks, but when we're talking, I never know. I'm just going to just, I'm just going to say okay. housekeeping. Well, fingers crossed. Let, let me do. Let's get into some housekeeping. housekeeping. If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here are a few ways you can. Well, you can write us a review. It helps us get more listeners and recommend our podcast to maybe some of your friends. So make sure that you can help us grow by going to your Apple, Spotify, Pod Chasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. And if you like what you hear and you want to buy us a virtual cup of coffee to support us, head over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees. And if you want to have some 90s, 2000s swag, head to our Redbubble store at nomorelatefees.redbubble.com. And let's okay. dive into this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Eva has been in charge of her younger sisters ever since their parents died many years ago. Eva's uncanny ability to interfere in her sister's affairs has not endeared her to their spouses and partners. The men would like to close out and divide up the family trust fund that Eva oversees so they concoct a simple plan compensate cash strapped ladies man Ray Adams played by LL Cool J to romance and distract Eva from her familial duties sparks fly between Ray and Eva but the plan goes awry it stars LL Cool J Gabrielle Union Dwayne Martin Essence Atkins Robin Lee Megan Good Mel Jackson D'Artagnan Edmonds and Mel Gibson. Directed by Gary Hardwick. Oh, it does say Mel Gibson. It does it? say Mel Gibson. Is that correct? <laughs> no. I, I, don't. I, I guess. We haven't done a Mel Gibson movie. <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> I, I thought it was a joke. I was like, oh, yeah. All these black famous people and Mel Gibson. <laughs> Mel Gibson. Honestly, I don't. I don't know. It was on Wikipedia or wherever I I was like, maybe someone just has the same name. (laughs) No. (laughs) It was written by James Iver, Madsen B.E. Browner, and Gary Hardwick. And you can watch it on Tubi. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. It's Mel Jackson. That's like, uh, but I didn't write and type anything, so somebody messed up. <laughs> Anywho, as you know, you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we're going to reveal the rating our Y2K versions of our cells would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current cells agree with our initial rating. Our skill consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Trash. Straight up trash. (laughs) All right. You ready? Ready. What what would your rating be? Uh, uh, Your white ticket. Well, I have the DVD, so I would buy it. I actually (laughs) did have the DVD for this movie, so yes, I would buy it. I love the piece you made when you confessed that. I, I still have it, I think, if I look for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jackie? I I remember renting this movie. Don't remember anything about it, but I know I watched it 
<laughs> so that's how memorable it was. So I'm going to go with a same day rental. Fair. Uh, I did not, I don't think I bought this one, but in this time period, I was very excited that there were so many black rom-coms. So I would say I, I thought it was a five day rental. She was naive, y'all. <laughs> 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 all right couldn't find the budget oh. couldn't find the budget online but the movie did make 17.6 million dollars it opened at number six the weekend of february 7th and it raked in about six million dollars that first opening weekend it did receive some mixed reviews from the critics the consensus stating, though Union and LL Cool J are appealing romantic leads, Deliver Us from Eva is too predictable and contrived. I mean, first of all, to say it's predictable when it's based off a freaking I mean, play from yeah. that everyone knows at this point, like that mm, Gabrielle Union has already been started. In. Yeah. <laughs> But that that was being nice, I guess. I feel like there was other things they could have tore down besides it being predictable. Well, I mean, I think predictable was the go-to romantic comedy criticism yeah. back then. Like, they always said, oh, it's so predictable. I was like, well, yeah, that's the point. Like, we know what's going to happen. They're going to end up together at the end. Like, right. that is – and there's no harm in that, I don't think. But I think – there's a lot of issues with the film. That, yeah, they could. Yeah, they could have talked about a lot of other things. But I think there's also a. We look at the film from a today's lens, and yeah. it just wouldn't even be made today. This is one of those films. <laughs> it would be. You know what? I think this would be a Netflix movie or even a Hallmark movie if you threw in Christmas. <laughs> you know, yeah. like now Lifetime has the mahogany collection, so they're. Which I just, I'm like, why do you have to name it a different thing, Hallmark, instead yeah. of just being inclusive and having black Lifetime movies or Hallmark movies, I mean. like have to, Because like, cause they got the mahogany cards. So the black it, mahogany cards. It's branding. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I just feel like I watched the movie and I was just, like, surprised that I thought this was good at some point in my life in the sense that the first few minutes of just Gabrielle Union was ridiculous. And then the second thing I thought was, I know a man wrote this. Yep. Because yeah, when women can only clear. think about like three different things. I don't even know if this movie passes the Bechdel test and there's four oh, women yeah. Yeah. in it. And what's funny is the film comments on that. Yes. They say there's plenty of things that women could talk about besides men, and then they all start laughing because they're like, <laughs> no, they're <good. laughs> well, of course, we can only talk about men. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an older sister. Jackie's an older sister. I can understand being very protective over your siblings, especially in her situation, but the way... She was a tyrant. She was... It was way overboard way overboard it was it was extreme and and you know one thing i do kind of like about it is that it played into um not being serious like as mm -hmm. a because a lot of times with the black romantic comedies they don't lean into like the absurd or yeah. into having a like a heightened sense of humor because it's very clear she's not a realistic person when we first meet her and i think what the problem is is that you establish her as this extreme character and then you soften her which is great you can soften her but we lose that edge over yeah. time and so it's just like what was the was this the intention or was gabrielle union just a ham as an actor and didn't know how to <laughs> rein it in <laughs> yeah i do agree that we really don't always like I feel like in black movies, black men are allowed the range to be absolutely just diving into the, the outlandish, but we mm -hmm. don't get to see it that often with black women, especially like in a lead role. But I don't, I don't think anything was deliberate. I don't think it, I, I really feel like it was an exaggeration of stereotypes of, of, of black women 
in general, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. and and it's strange because when you watch the film, there was no like nothing happens in the film. like outside of outside of like okay the relationship yes that happens that develops I guess, but literally at the end of the film. Because I'm just going to be, you have to talk about the fact that they committed a crime. These three men commit a crime and a police officer is creating false police reports. And she comes in and she apologizes for how she has been to them. And their significant others just are like, I love you, baby. I miss you. Let's go have sex. And they like... She, it's, but it's it's the setup though. She comes in. <laughs> she says, "I'm sorry. I was this way." They didn't do anything to, like, there was no. Like, she didn't forgive them. Mm-hmm. She just wants forgiveness. And then they say, "Well, our wives still hate us." And I was like, "Yeah, they should. They they should hate you still. It ain't been. It's been like what five days." But then she said, "They love you." My sisters love you. And then they all walk in in a line and they have a moment. And then she, the, the one that's not even married, who is the most concerned about the money. Right. Proposes. Us? And that's it. So here, here are the reasons why these men are mad. Yes. Eva does cock block them on a regular she is in their business all the time and she won't allow the family trust to be divided amongst the girls so that their men have access to it, which is just like, hello, of course not. It's family money. And you're the guy, like you're saying, Dwayne Martin's character was not even engaged to this woman. And it was his main motivation in the Mm -hmm. entire movie. Like nobody was concerned that this man was trying to steal this money. Yeah, and I, I, I was watching it, and I was like, "Look, they gonna get married now that they all got some money, and she gonna turn up missing, and that's the sequel, right? Like, that's the sequel. like <laughs> she's like, oh, you got the money? I could, I could I this finally, I can pull this ring out. Like, that's literally what happened. And, and we already know he's good at falsifying documents, <laughs> right? I can't find the any information about the Bechdel test, but I believe. It would pass because she has a conversation with them about moving to Chicago and taking the job. Also, she talks to that lady, the one who she gave a bad review or whatever. It's that rating. Also, it's to be noted that this is during the time when LL Cool J believed that he was going to be a real actor and wanted to transition from using LL Cool J to his real name, Todd. It did not stick. It didn't, because even in the, even in the credits, they call him L Cool J. So, <laughs> but like I was watching it, and I was kind of thinking, I was like, wow, as a rapper turned actor, I never really think of him as one. I, it's not that I don't remember his music exists; it's just that I don't think of him as a rapper turned actor because his acting is on par with every other actor in the film. Yeah. LL Cool J has never had a moment on screen where he wasn't committed like an actor yeah oh yeah but maybe that's also because he did sitcoms and the the what he had to do for that shifted because i queen that's a trend by the way rappers that did sitcoms tend to be very good actors will smith queen latifah ll cool j there's something about that routine yeah uh soap operas soap opera stars talk about this too and people like who started on soaps they say they just learn so much about the craft being in those environments, having to learn so many scripts in such a short time. I, I think it's a really good place for them. And, and theater, I feel like you always get really quality performances. Yeah. I think yeah. With, yeah, with theater, it's the training. But I think the thing about the, doing the sitcom is they literally acted more than yeah. most rapper turn actors. Because you film a movie or like a short like a like a limited series you only film for so long they literally almost every day for years were acting yeah uh, speaking of ll cool j being he was the sitcom one of the 
I don't know if he was in anything else, other sitcoms, but he was in on in the house and Hardwick, the director of this movie worked together. They worked together on that show as well as he directed the brothers with Gabrielle Union. So he did talk about picking both of them to be the leads. I don't think, I don't know if there were any other choices. I think he picked them and I think they had great chemistry considering how outlandish some of it was. I mean, LL yeah. was doing his LL thing. I do prefer him in The Last Holiday if I was going to pick, but he he did well in this one, I think. Well, and I think it's the, like you were saying, he, he's not a bad actor because it, like he was fabulous in Halloween H2O, like <laughs> yeah. anything he's in, whether it's romantic like rom-coms or like more of it, like he always adds levity to it because there is comedy in his character in Halloween H2O as well, but like never mad when I see LL. Right, and he never feels like he 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 feels like he earned the job. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Obviously, I'm probably going to need some help because I don't remember watching this. So, <laughs> it's brand new to me. So, we start out and it, it was an interesting intro. It felt very my best friend thing yes. ask where I felt it's just the same like way. A little doo-wop routine but they were not i don't know what beats they were hearing but they were not hearing the same beats as a black person i was offended <laughs> i don't Do know if they think? played they probably played different music and tried to sync it later and that's why it was off but i was but expecting... they weren't even in sync with one another yeah i don't know it was not they... stellar they look like they didn't want to do it. They, felt, they, 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 looked like, they looked like they were like, this is lame. Why are we doing this? I thought we were doing, you know, like, why are we doing this, right? Yeah. And the difference was my best friend, Wedding, didn't use the actors that are actually right. in the movie. They, right. they came yeah. straight, for, they was there for the open and that was it. They had a budget on this movie to hire some really good dancers <laughs> and singers. So they just had to, we're going to play the song and have y'all mouth the words and just do whatever you want especially d'artagnan <laughs> the one who plays megan goods husband. Like, he, i don't know what he was doing <laughs> but the, i promise you they didn't want to be there i just don't even know what the theme was either like they were in 60s 50s clothing i didn't understand how it was going back to the movie like yeah. maybe if they had done it in shakespearean clothes because it's based on a shakespeare play but like nothing was tying whatever they did in the beginning of that movie nothing to the movie <laughs> no it was tied to the song of like oh okay this is what they would look like if they actually sang the song okay but why are they singing the yeah. song and what does that song have to do with the movie right <laughs> nothing <laughs> <laughs> what does it have to do i was like ain't this a movie about some people playing a like with a with a scheme on a woman to get to, like this is not i mean while it is a romantic comedy and there's romance and that's not the point of the movie that ain't the point of the movie <laughs> I, I feel like they would have done better if they played with the concept so the director compared the three guys to the three stooges and almost so how they wrote them i would have maybe that would have made more sense than whatever we got there so. or like a lay our family or some like sister Something. song so you see how bonded the sisters are yeah and then like the dudes come in kind of later you know like something to kind of set up the scene but instead we just get this random opening and you're just like okay, okay. i would have loved like a cartoon version that started up where you see eva like cutting a string and an anvil falls on one of them yeah. like just sabotaging all the dudes so that you kind of get an idea that that's what's going on as we get into there but who are we yeah who are we to like judge? like 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 honey and shrunk the kids type of opening yeah Something exactly fun yeah. yes 
Exactly. So <laughs> it, it, the movie opens up and it's voiceover by LL Cool J's character, Ray. We are seeing his funeral and he's explaining that <laughs> the three guys look sad, but they're not really sad. And then they show the guys significant others is what I refer to them as in my notes. The three sisters of Eva. The they're Dandridge sisters. Upset. The Dandridge sisters. <laughs> And, and and it pans to Eva and it says she's the reason I'm dead. And so then we re rewind to uh, book club night, but the guys have commandeered the the TV in the family room to watch football. And the sister, I didn't even memorize the sisters' names. There's Jackie, who's played by Megan Good. There's Karina. Who yes. was played by Essence Atkins, and there's Bethany played by Robin Lee. There we go. In this scene, I just this is where I feel like, oh my God, she this is just way over the top. Mm -hmm. First of all, there are four of you. There are four sisters. They all have their own houses. You're telling me not one of you can host this book? club meeting at your three other options of homes and then their excuse as to why they need to move the guys need to move to somewhere else and again the same can be said for the guys why yeah. can't want they go to another house they end up going to a bar instead but like it does not make sense there's too many houses and scenarios here for this to be happening in the first place based it, on it, it doesn't make yeah. any sense <laughs> <laughs> And based on what Eva says to them, it reminded me very much of on How I Met Your Mother when it, when Erickson would get in like his argument and then he'd be like, lawyered. Like, that's what I felt. And I'm like, oh, she's a lawyer. That's why she talks like this. No, no. <laughs> I'll find out. She has nothing to do with the law world at all. I do laugh though when she does use a lot of big words when it comes to Daryl. She does, she knows every, she's read every one of these men. She knows all of their Achilles heels. And when she says the big word, she knows that he can't get it and she calls him out for it. I did have a legitimate laugh during that part because he does look very confused. I, I love it in that sense, but my thing is. Okay, so she doesn't like them. Why? I mean, we're not give, we're given so many reasons to understand why they're not likable people. Because look what they do, mm -hmm. look what they did, they did. Yeah. But like, we're we're not given any insight into why they have if their relationships are actually good relationships. We're not right. given any insight into that. So it's like you set up that this sister hates them and then you show them do something bad to her but you don't actually ever show them be a good person not only to her but to anyone yeah, yeah. so it it yeah, doesn't make any sense it would be one thing if like it was she, she was protective right like she's been taking care of them if we learn maybe the youngest sister she just felt like she was too young and she dropped out of college or something like that that that's why she's she can't stand Daryl, or if Timothy got in the way of the other sister becoming a doctor, something that would just make sense as to what is this fight about. I do understand though, like her having control over her siblings for so long and being protective and taking care of them and letting that go is probably a hard process for her, especially due to like the trauma of it all. And the sisters also having a codependent relationship with her, not being able to quite let go and kind of, because when you get married, roles change, you know, like you now have a partner that you're going to make decisions with. You can't just let your big sister come and fix everything or tell you exactly what to do. It was a lot Which of therapy the sessions sisters... needed to be happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I could see like either way, just give us a reason. Either these are like the most stand up dudes. They're proving it over and over again to Eva. And she's just not having it because those are her baby sisters and she's going to take care of them. And no man is good enough. Or like they're trash. What's the reasons why they're trash <laughs> and why she hates them? Like we get right. none of that. And it, right. It, no, but I was I was also thinking that they don't show us, so they don't show us any of that. But then, for me, 
it is really hard to believe that the sisters are so reliant on Eva because they all look like they're the same damn age. Thank you. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, if Eva was like 45 years old and really took care of her younger right. sisters, it would have, first of all, the film would have worked better because it would just be inherently funny to watch this older woman get a man. You right. know, like, it's just fun, you know, to see that experience. But to see, like... I was like, hey, hey, is Gabrielle Union even really even older than any of them? Or Robin, it was hard for me to understand. Be- Be- Bethany, who played who's played by Robin Lee, I felt like she looked older than Gabrielle at some points. And we all know Dwayne Martin is older than everybody else in this cast. So it was hard to believe that she was the same age, and it was hard to believe that any of them were related to each other. I'm yeah. sorry. They did not look like sisters and in any form at all. Yeah, no, no, and it's not just like the way they looked. It was really like their chemistry didn't feel like sisters. They felt mm-hmm. like friends. friends. Yeah. And they called each other friends a few times in the movie, which it was kind of weird. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Just well, she said, I don't want to, I don't want to lose your friendship. Yeah. I don't want to lose your friend. You're my sister. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What you mean? <laughs> One of us has to move because <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like Danielle said, the boys are putting their foot down and they end up at the sports bar down the street. Uh, while they're there, they're kind of complaining about Eva. They We do get the backstory of their parents died when they were... Like, this whole scene is just to tell us, like exposition of like what had happened and why Eva is a shrew but then they look over and they see LL like there's two women kind of fighting (laughs) over him and like he he is a master of words and he is able to calm both of them down and like y'all should be mad at me not each other he's just smooth and so and he ends up betting both of them, as we're yes. supposed to assume, that he's yeah. got so many skills that he's been lying so much that they're like, oh, you know what? We're going to go home with you today. And you know no, no. They end up together. They're, yes. They yes. Together. Yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we see them later. They have found love together. <laughs> but the, the, the trio of idiots decide we're going to hire him, Ray. Michael knows him from school. We're going to hire Ray to make Eva fall in love with him and then convince her to move away <laughs> so they can get on with their lives and their wives and girlfriends. Which falls into that whole trope that, you know, if women are assertive or angry or aggressive in any way, it means they need to get laid or something like, Oh, they just need a man to fix all those problems. Yeah. Well, you know, it leans into that. And not only does it lead into that, it tries to prove that as well as true. <laughs> They're like, no, that's really what she needed. And then she comes out and she apologizes for it. So it's, that's what film wants us to think. <laughs> oh, tragic. In the next scene, we see kind of how Eva has a chokehold over each of the sisters. And, like, she walks into the room while one of her sisters is about to have sex with her husband. And, like, she doesn't even, like, apologize, like, oh, I'm so sorry I walked on you and you I'll come no. back later. She's just like, no, I need to talk to you now. And it's about, like, something not that important. I, I just feel like there's no boundaries, obviously. And she has no respect for her sister or the relationship. But I do want to call into focus, like, as I go back and watch some of these older movies, the way that Megan Good was so sexualized is, yes. it blows my mind. And quite honestly, I, I question, I'm like, did she participate in this because it's just the, like, environment? Was it that she didn't feel like she had acting the acting skills to be able like it just as soon as we see a scene with her by herself here she is in her bra and just like it kind of icked me out because I felt like she was younger than everybody else in that movie but that could also just be my thought processes of 
of looking at her as younger. I don't know. I was not. Well, that, that, that was kind of how she was cast at the time, most of the time. Like, yeah. that was almost every Megan Good role at one point. Luckily, she's starting to get better at things. But, like, it, I feel like this is probably an example of this is a slightly more adult film than I've done, and it actually is giving me some material that they have given me in a very long time where it's not it, – where it's, she obviously has something beyond being sexualized. And so I think, like, deciding to do a film, like, it, it, she was always swaying, like, where her career could go with her options. And I think people were just not interested in that at all. Because they, if you think about it, actually, out of all of the sisters, I think she was the least interesting yeah. in, in terms of, like, her own story. Like, she didn't really have anything... <laughs> I, and they, they made her married and she's like oh yeah I'm in school and it, it, that was it it's like so she's just in school and she's married and she lives in this house and like what is <laughs> what? Oh, the only time she got interesting I believe is when the sisters acknowledged that she wanted her older sister first for Eva for herself and that you know she seemed like she was self wanting to sabotage the relationship that when Eva started to date L O Cool J's character, which I can't remember Ray. his name, Ray. That like I feel like that would have been a fun layer that it, she was sabotaging the plans that the guys had been putting in place. As I have a younger sister, and she, I have two younger sisters that try to sabotage most of my relationships every time, <laughs> mainly because <laughs> I date trash. But still, they they act crazy. I related to that. Well, yeah, well, that just goes into question, like, brings up the point that the film really doesn't explore the women very much at all. Mm -hmm. And so whatever, like, their part in the relationship, we really don't explore it. They basically just do whatever Eva says or follow behind Eva, but, like, they have no mind of their own. They, and that was the maybe the biggest glimpse you had into that with her talking about, like, cool j's eyes and like the little thing it felt like they were gonna go there and then they just didn't go there at all and my thing was it's like the relationship so i mean the film basically it, it was in a weird way like oddly on the men's side because yeah. they didn't give us anything else they didn't help us understand why the sisters were this way they didn't get into the their codependency issues with Eva we never actually explored that because this film could have went in some amazing directions if they actually looked into the psyche of codependency or just how do relationships work how are they supposed to work yeah, um, right and and those and a film about boundaries if it was a film about boundaries but no it was just a it was a film about boneheaded women that do whatever their sister says and so and the boneheaded men that they're with that don't like th that their wives are so boneheaded it's like <laughs> <laughs> i i think 10 things i hate about you they do explain why cat is a shrew you know mm -hmm. she explains she finally tells her sister that you know i was like you and I had the guy, Joey, slept with her, took advantage of her. And this is why she has, like, she's so guarded. We we kind of get that explanation when we they talk us, talk about Lucius. But mm, it, I don't think it's enough to be this ridiculous, this hard-headed. I mean, I, I don't know this woman's trauma, but they don't really yeah, kind of break it down. Yeah, because, I, I mean, it just sounded like, the the relationship was not meant to be at the time that they were together and it and it, like it didn't sound like he did anything horrible to her for her her to event like spurn all men or anything <laughs> it was just like she was young she was taking care of her younger siblings and like she couldn't just give that up to be married to him like right and the difference was when you watch 10 things i hate about you Cat was a shrew to everyone. It was not yes. about men. Yes. She was just a hard person. Yes. You know? Yes. And that is, like, she had problems with her own sister. And because of the, like, the sister aspect, like, the dynamic of the sisters in 10 Things I Hate About You, it already sets it up so that we don't, that we understand 
both of their points of view a little bit more. Right, right. Uh, and we actually start to like cat more ultimately, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think with Deliver Us from Eva, like Eva is really nice to the white men at her job. Yes. Eva like almost almost like kiss assy nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she like she's hard at her job, but that's different. That's her job. It makes sense for her to be like that. Right. We have no like there's no issue there. But she's like that with men. And it's like, is it these specific men or is it just she doesn't trust relationships? It didn't really explore that right because like she's when she's talking to the pastor she's not a shrew she's just a know-it-all and there's a difference you know she's annoying but not like kind of hard and kind of a dick to everybody so yeah i think that's i what i had a problem with is like there was no really redeemable qualities about eva like with cat you can kind of see like she does have her interests she does have her friends she's just very highly guarded where eva was just like going out of her way to be a bitch to people like it especially the boyfriends and husbands and stuff. I just, I I had a hard time sympathizing with her. Like if they had shown more of the backstory and the things that she had to sacrifice to take care of her sisters and like understanding her from that place, it would have made more sense. I would have even thought like maybe if the mom had died and the dad couldn't handle it and and left Mm -hmm. that abandonment mood would have made sense why she was like, a certain way about men but oh lord so she like we said she bum rushes into her sister her younger sister trying to get it on with her dumb dumb husband we find out it's not important and then what happens next i <laughs> so we get this weird montage of them all dancing to the same song as they're getting ready for work I guess it's their like affirmation song or whatever. I guess. <laughs> Ain't no stopping sunshine. Ain't no stopping that song. <laughs> and then and somehow course, they. <laughs> no, of course, they had yeah. to have that montage of them like walking together so we could just see all of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where do they work where they can all line up like the plastics and walk down these stairs <laughs> with the boyfriends behind them and husbands behind them? I thought they were shopping. That's what I thought. I thought so too. <laughs> yeah. It felt like the scene in House Bunny where they all like come together and start After walking. After their makeovers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or the craft. Yes. It's the yes. craft walk as well. <laughs> They're so and it's there's... in slow motion. Jawbreaker. And so many like, slow very, motion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh. <laughs> and then like that that montage goes nowhere. It like, does it didn't go anywhere. I guess you see There's that one point. of them is a doctor because that's the only thing you can glean from that entire montage is she puts on a lab coat. Didn't even notice that. Didn't even notice uh. it. <laughs> But now we're back at the sports bar. Ray is there again. So the guys go up to him. They're like, we have a proposition for you. Shows him like the worst picture of Eva. Like she's like, why is she scowling? And they try to say it's a sexy smirk. (laughs) I will say that Gabrielle Union nailed doing that face because I did laugh out loud seeing that picture. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, they had that in all the TV spots back then. I remember really? seeing that in the commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Use your best believe- jokes to get people to the <laughs> theater. Right? The fact that I so- paid money to see this movie in the theater really haunts me right now. <laughs> And so Ray does ask, like, what's wrong with her? And they're like, oh, nothing. It's fine. Nothing. But they do offer to pay him to go out with her, tell him that their ultimate goal is for him to trick her into moving. And they're going to give him $5,000, which he needs because his lease is ending and the person who owns the house he's in is planning on selling it and he would like to buy it from them. What kind of rent to own program is Ray in? I it's don't only know. $5,000. Right? Or is it like, I, I, oh, did he have a large sum and he only needed that last 5K? But I'm they guessing saying he was hard up for money. 
Well, he said, I'm a little bit of a bind. I need, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get my house. That's how he said it. They didn't explain anything. I'm in a little bit of a bind. Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> He only got five thousand. He only got five thousand plus spending cash. He does say he's a lover, not a con man. And uh, one of the guys says he had muscles. I didn't think he'd be scared of her. (laughs) How they put when he's like, "Nah, I'm good." And then we're at the hair salon. Now I just feel like it was a crime to underuse Kim Whitley this way? Like, why, girl? Why? I feel like she's... uh, She always makes me laugh, and I don't know. I just thought... They didn't use... They didn't... Well, she had one... She had one joke the entire film. Yeah. Yeah, they reduced her to just, like, jumping on whatever dick she could find. (laughs) Like, that was... She was just hitting on everyone and talking about her sexual exploits. That's all. And can we talk about what Bethany was pretending to do in Eva's hair for (laughs) days? Like, (laughs) I could not. She just kept fluffing it. It, It's like, what the fuck is going on? I I had never noticed this before, but I was like, they're doing nothing. And this (laughs) movie is so, like, nothing was happening. Like, just doing to the feet doing this to the hair like just patting it and what i noticed was this movie has a lot of scenes where it was clear they didn't have a budget and they had some actors and they were just like we're gonna just have them sit and talk and explain stuff and that's gonna be the scene because there's no transitions there's no like like they did the montage that meant nothing at all and then they showed the outside of the bar and then all of a sudden you just see LL Cool J standing <laughs> and talking to them. He doesn't walk into the bar. The film doesn't do any of those kind of shots. I was like, they didn't have any money but to just like film these quick scenes and edit them together and just do <laughs> something with it. But- like I, I can imagine the director coming and saying, you know what guys, we have some gaps. So here's the new <laughs> updated scripts. We're going to do some filler scenes to give us some transitions. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it from that perspective. I was just like, why are we getting these very boring, useless scenes? Oh. But they yeah. did have in the budget to superimpose the Chicago skyscrapers over downtown LA at the end. <laughs> why not just go and get an establishing shot in Chicago? Like it, it must have been cheaper to do that than superimpose buildings over... And they didn't do it no. well. No. no. But no, but like they spent, it, it feels like they spent money on LL Cool J and then they couldn't afford to do a lot else. <laughs> they like, they like, we have Gabrielle Union and LL Cool J. So what else can we do with this movie? That, I mean, cause it's interesting. Cause like you look at the casting and you're like, yeah, they didn't have a budget and it's not that they're bad actors, but it's so clear that they were like, this is what we can afford. <laughs> like, have you ever seen D'Artagnan Edmonds in another film ever? <laughs> this is like the, that is one of the most that is one of the most interesting castings I've ever seen because he's been in like three movies in his entire career, and this is a really big role for. And you would think he would do something else after, or like Robin Lee. Like, who is she? I'm like, how did she, get in this movie? she was the girl that messed up Hitch and Hitch. That was all I that remember. That was after this movie. And that was after this movie. Uh, what did you, was it? I guess it was. It was yeah. 2004 that it came out? Yeah. Welcome to Bitch Watch. Hi, I'm Sly. I'm Witsy. And we're two bitches watching TV. We're a recap and shit talk show. That's right. We watch hours and hours and hours hours of tv so you don't have to you can listen and laugh along with us everywhere you listen to podcasts and find us on instagram and twitter at bitch watch pod is our show original no entertaining we hope so this is bitch watch so we're at the hair salon who is it jackie or bethany that's doing the least with eva's bethany hair? is doing the <laughs> least with her hair <laughs> like and 
and Michael walks in <laughs> her boyfriend and he immediately starts asking her about the dandridge fund again. And, and Eva's like, no, you're not even family yet. Like right. quit asking about it. But then he's like, you got my stuff. And <laughs> she hands him a giant thing of fiber, which, which Eva calls out. I'm like, man, like keep that on the DL. Like you don't have to be blasting this man's business. I know he's after the money, but like, we it's... don't have to be talking about his fiber. And why did he have to come pick it up? Like, y'all, like, I, I know they don't live together, but this is beyond ridiculous. And you're telling me, as a grown-ass man, you couldn't go buy the fiber? Not only he could not buy the fiber, but he needs to get it in the middle of his workday while in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then they show them later, like, in bed together, and then he has to go home. I'm like, well, why she couldn't give it to him then? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. But Eva does give him the name of a good doctor to take care of that situation. And he didn't have to go to get that. Nope. Was it colonic? Is that what you call it? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, he didn't have to go. Pushed out. <laughs> I mean, honestly, she did do him a favor. Everybody should be making sure they're looking at their, co their colon because colon cancer is very, very serious. That's my PSA for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, we're, how are we making that a bad thing that Eva did? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> that was what did helpful. she do wrong? Right. What she, did she do wrong? <laughs> she recommended a doctor, and he got some some health care. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so now the next scene because there are no transitions much like on this podcast where <laughs> eva is at work we find out she works for the health department she does the restaurant I can't inspections the name of it. thank you mm -hmm. uh, and ll ray happens to be delivering his he works for a meat company, so he's making his delivery. I have and a, he watches... Yeah, go ahead. I have a question. So I think he gets happy about this because the manager that he comes into contact with about delivering the meat is kind of rude to him. And we do find out later that this guy is actually undercover to evaluate Eva. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. But why did you still have to be an asshole like he comes and he's supposed to be like this nice guy afterwards. And I was like, I peeped you being an asshole to the meat man. What was that still because, in character? Because it was like undercover boss. He had to just do the <laughs> because they also came in and everybody's yes. hands were like flat out like this. And I'm just like and I knew what was coming because I've seen it before. So I was watching him with the different eyes. And I'm like, why is he doing the job so hard if he's just trying to watch Eva? Like, isn't right. the whole point just to watch her not them right but and maybe he felt like they everyone had to believe the charade of it all i don't know it was weird well i thought she was gonna come in and it was gonna be like an a plus because he had all the hands out like he was like a hard ass <laughs> uh, like manager but no it's yeah he was a secret shopper for eva i didn't get it and when she was saying that like that whole thing of she's naming Martin Luther King and then Nelson Mandela and then was like, and I bet your mom too. I'm like, what? What? Why does she go so hard? I mean, I don't Why, she know. Going so, Why was she like going off like that? Like you, you're in the position of power. Why does she feel the need? And that's kind of a issue I have with the film too. Of like. She don't have to be so hard at her job because she's good at it. So right. actually, why would she have to be this way? You know, because even like the Devil Wears Prada, she really wasn't a hard ass. She was more aloof. Like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just, and, and like, why is she going off on this man just because he doesn't like what she, well, of course he doesn't like it. He don't have to. 
he's he's in the loser position here it's cool it's like she didn't have to justify like she right. had facts she had right. temperature there's a crack in the glass like there was nothing he could argue against right so Just why is she like Bye. yeah making this big speech like sorry about it fix it i'll be back it right. was so unnecessary but apparently ray sees something he likes in this scene. He's like behind a shelf. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing also about the movie is that people just decide to do things and it's like, well, why? Like, where, where did this come from? Right. Hey, let's just have, like, let's, let's ask, right? Like, where did that come from? And then all of a sudden he sees her snapping and all of a sudden he's like, okay, yeah, I want, I like her now. If we, yeah. maybe, if we had known that this guy was a guy that was always a dick to him consistently every time he came to deliver meat and finally getting to see him be put in his place was just like, there's something about this lady I like, maybe. But like, yeah. we learned that Very he's good. never seen this man before. So that couldn't have been it. Ray goes back to the dudes and says, I'm in. <laughs> These dumbasses. And why is he in? <laughs> like, why? Like, all, all, like, he just says he likes the challenge. Yeah. Like, he'll be in the whatever hall Play, of fame. Plays, like, yeah. And so the guys decide the best way for him to meet Eva is at church. So they go to church. And Eva's trying to take control of the damn choir. Um, and then going hard <laughs> as the choir director so hard and after right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she and she's in her face like they are and they're not and they're not following her at all no. she's doing all of that and they're just swaying back and forth <laughs> smiling <laughs> then after church they're i guess they're eating all together at church or whatever still and that's when Ray comes. He's a little late, but he says he doesn't do church. And that's when they introduce him to Eva. And Eva already starts. This man, oh, he, he literally just says hello. And she's already starting with her bullshit. Um, but I do like that he tells her that he has a girlfriend. That really throws her for a loop. That is not what she expected. And she's disappointed. But boo, if you were interested why were you coming so hard at this man? Like, did you, does she think that this is how to attract them, man? I don't get it. And a lot of that could make sense. It just doesn't go into it. That's the problem. Yeah, like, yeah maybe, maybe. Or maybe she really has been hurt. And so she just like pushes people away. It could be that simple, but it never goes into those details. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The guys, of she brings her spicy baked beans, which apparently is a barometer. <laughs> yeah, that happens after this because, like, the guys are mad that LL Ray said that he has a girlfriend, but he's like, I got a plan, don't worry. And they invite him to their barbecue for him to say, like, in a few days, he'll be broken up with said girlfriend. And yeah, why, yeah, why make beans that, like, no one else? can eat and it's not like you're having a mixed company barbecue all the time it just seems to be family and i don't know if i saw any other people there maybe close friends like nobody's eating these goddamn because she just wants to punish them because <laughs> she just wants to punish those men she said it separates the men from the boys i'm like yeah but you already know their boys so who cares <laughs> right and like, wouldn't they have worn? Because they all seem like they're pretty like close, right? Like, wouldn't they have worn him? Like, just don't eat the, the beans. beans ever. And she's like watching him, like just waiting when Ray finally gets the plate. But he plays it off well. I I don't know. It doesn't seem like he knew they were hers, but and I don't know if it was a gen genuine reaction or if he was playing it off because she was watching. But that was what made her agree to go on said date. So he passed uh, the bean test. <laughs> <laughs> I, he, ate, he ate those beans like he knew it was a test. Right. And I didn't. I didn't like that. I didn't like that he knew it was a test. <laughs> <laughs> you need 
to have genuine bean eating reaction. <laughs> right. But like he he ate it like like they were really hot and but he knew she was watching him eat right. the bean. I was like, wait, did what did they tell and why they why did <laughs> did um, the mega good husband whatever he is, why whatever his name is. Daryl. Why did he why did he eat the beans if he knew <laughs> she made right. them? Like, yeah. yeah. Well And then they say stop making these beans. Stop She's eating. not. Right. Well, we've already established that Daryl is not too bright. When they talk about the three men being kind of aligned with the three stooges, Daryl mm -hmm. <laughs> is curly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, I guess. Yeah. Um, but his wife at this point should be like, put those down, baby. You know you can't handle them. Yeah. And, right. But they're also portrayed as dumb too because she <laughs> screams and says, give him bread. And I'm like, you, well, she has had to have said that before. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. They made that so, up that day. They were just like, let's do a scene with some beans. I t I'm telling you, somebody went to the local grocery store and got some baked beans out of a can and just threw it into, like, as a prop that day. I promise you, that was in the script. <laughs> it, was a, it was a potluck, and the director said, you know what? I think we could make a filler scene out of this. What y'all think? <laughs> yes. That's what that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Eva agrees to go on a date with Ray, and so he shows up at her house. She got a lot of horse shit in her house, and so oh, he's like, literal, oh, literal, like, like horses, horse stuff. Horse yeah. stuff. She <laughs> Eva's a horse girl. She is, yeah. And so he kind of asked her about it, and she's like, "Yeah, I just really like horses." She's not too happy when they get in his car, though. Well, she gave him a hard time because he was late, but luckily mm -hmm. someone told him that her favorite flowers were lilies, so she calms down. She has a lot of triggers. That, yes. That's pretty much, like, landmine triggers, pretty much. Why does she get in? Why does she get in the truck thing? Why does she get in? Why not say, oh, let's take my car since you have to drive the company car? Right. Yeah. <laughs> because I think Eva just likes to bitch. I think it's just her love language, apparently. I think she just wants to keep prodding and pushing and testing and just how far can I push before this guy leaves? I don't know. Which, which would have been an interesting dynamic if they showed her doing that with her sisters, at least sometimes. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, so, uh, like crying or manipulating them. Like, oh, you're just mm -hmm. going to leave me anyways. Go to your husband. Like doing something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So she's mad about him driving the box truck. And he says, I don't have a car because I'm trying to save money to buy a house. And my work lets me drive it for free. So why do I need a car? So she sees the value in that because purchasing real estate is really important. And he kind of <laughs> breaks the ice even further. He turns on the radio, starts singing a song, and then she gets into it too. And then they show up at a restaurant of Eva's choosing because she is very particular about which restaurant she will go to because she inspects them all. And there's a part <laughs> where like they're eating and then Ray is choking and she's like, you're playing with me, but he's not. And so she goes to give him the Heimlich and he says, it's not the hug I'm hoping for, but it'll do for now. So he really was tricking her. Oh, and then a new man, it's just, why? why Ray? It feels like something corny that he would do in real life or something. I don't know. It yeah. just felt very genuinely <laughs> like not in the script. I don't know. It was yeah. weird. Well, I've seen it before in other films, that yeah. exact same scenario. Then the the manager shows up and Eva loses her shit because it is not the OCD manager that she knows. It's actually a manager from another restaurant that Eva tore her up with a bad score. And, you know, the lady kind of plays with her. And I understand that. Like, if you feel like someone is fucking with your food, you don't want to eat there. So I kind of was like, it didn't make sense that Ray was like, oh, shit, we need to get out of here. Because 
the context of it all. Like I wouldn't want to eat there knowing Eva has pissed off the people behind everything, you know? Right. So yeah, she was taunting her. She was yeah. taunting Eva. Yeah. So I just thought it was weird that he wanted to stay there and she rips him a new one. I don't really like the way that she ripped him a new one because she goes into like this whole spiel about how pretty much she's better than Ray because Ray just delivers meat and she does, she's such a higher class person, which was just kind of, kind of gross essentially, you know, I make more money than you. So my, my value is larger than yours right i don't think it was like the right take for her being upset to have to go that low it was a real low bowling and he kind of blows it off like he doesn't even really get upset that she's saying all these horrible things about him and his worth as a person because of his job and i think that's because he doesn't tie his worth to a job i don't even think he thinks that much of the job it's just something that he enjoys doing and he's mentioned that he doesn't take it too seriously you know like yeah his boss is trying to give the business to him and all sorts of stuff and he's just like oh okay no yeah, i don't think he finds his he doesn't find value in himself about the job so i think that's why he doesn't get upset but he does realize that he has blown it with her like yeah. there's no way to turn this around he, he um, says she doesn't have a wall up she has an electrified fence with rabid pit bulls <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true it, it is very true we did miss one scene and that's when she finds out that that guy was not a manager he was like evaluating her for right. a position and so she they tell her they have a couple more people that they need to like observe but there's a position open in chicago that she's up for essentially right and she hasn't told her sisters yet that there's this opportunity and so you know you see in different times like when she's trying to talk to the pastor she's trying to figure out like what she should do because now she's afraid to leave her sisters right and how they will react to that so that's kind of like a beast storyline happening all at the same time yeah yeah but but it it gets solved in the same scene basically yeah (laughs) (laughs) she's just like oh okay cool it's fine Um, and the guys the guys do meet up with ray to like for him to tell it like hey i there's nothing i can't fix this shit like i messed up real bad she's pretty pissed and she goes and meets with her sisters what happens is that she and in, she interrupts her sisters again trying to get their bone on and so then the guys have to meet up because the sisters are all consoling poor eva yeah. that she has fucked up another relation i mean the relationship didn't go well <laughs> I mean, you did kind of break it down, though, that really all they wanted was sex from their wives. I mean, they wanted it for different reasons. It's that one, the, the, I, the, I, this is also a flawed <laughs> film. I don't know these characters' names at all. <laughs> but Essence <laughs> Atkins <laughs> and Mel Gibson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to have a baby. I mean, well, he wanted to have a baby, and, but it's ultimately that, right? And then... Dwayne Martin wants to stay at over basically and yeah. he wants the money and he wants the money and then Megan Good and her husband Daryl he just Darryl. wants to have he just wants to have sex yeah. Yeah. with her and so it's just like so that is what y'all want like there was there's really no like <laughs> <laughs> there's the only person who has a reason I think okay so I feel like Timothy's reason is is valid. Like his wife already has like a high profile job and she's busy and he's trying to convince her to have a baby. That's valid. What Michael really wants to do is be able to kind of string this woman along in this relationship and have them living together without any kind of signs that he's moving in the direction of marriage. So I don't, necessarily think it's a bad thing that Eva kind of tells his her sister like don't move in with this guy because he's not he's you guys have been together for a while and he still hasn't proposed and he keeps trying to talk about money that isn't his like he's questionable Daryl's just an idiot 
He wants his wife to be home to read to him. Also, did anyone realize, like, can he not read? I, I, I was wondering that. I mean, he works for the post office, so I'm assuming he must have to know how to read to deliver this mail. <laughs> But also, he wants his home wife home to read to him like a child. Weird. Which she's happy to do for him. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to say it's weird. I mean, everybody has their thing, and some people might like that, you know, especially if you're an auditory learner and it's just mm -hmm. nicer. I get it. But, like, also, I don't get it in this Well, it's just... It's also because he's not too developed as a character. And so right, ultimately, yeah. like, everything he does, I mean, he's just for fun. The, everything he did, <laughs> we just meant to laugh at him. <laughs> so uh, Eva's at another inspection at a different restaurant, and Ray shows up with his meat. <laughs> and he apologizes, asks her out again, and tells her, we can do anything you want. And so she chooses to go horseback riding and i mean i think he handles it as well as he can for probably i'm assuming having limited experience with horses that was just so exaggerated i I've, I've ridden a horse before and i'm not a like a person who knows how to ride a horse but like my ass was not falling and flinging all over the place like that that's just it was it was ridiculous. I get it. I know it's for yeah. comedic effect, but also it was dumb. You can then, also tell it's a stunt double. You can see. Yes. It. It's not, yeah. <laughs> I paused it because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a uh, cool J, and it's very clear. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. The best part is that Eva confesses that she chose horseback riding because she doesn't get to do it often because she does she can't afford it. Right. Which makes Which me like, question the decision that happens at the end of the movie even more. Yes. <laughs> because. And, <laughs> and, like, how expensive could horseback riding be. It's not like she said, I've always wanted to own a horse and I can't afford that. Like it, it was literally like just going riding at the stables. Yeah. I mean, I'm very confused at how much money is really going around in these streets because yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very confused. How Are you very is successful? In this standard fund. Right. And is Eva very successful or is she still pinching penny? Like, I, I, I don't understand. You're right. She should have said, like, I want to be able to own the horse. Yes. And I can't afford, afford that. Because that is, a, like, to have a horse and to, like, the maintenance of keeping mm -hmm. it and the food and all that crap. I get that. I don't know, ma'am. I'm confused. <laughs> And she said she went once a month. It was like, but that's also normal to only go once a month. Like, yeah. you don't have that much free time and you're always with your sisters. Yeah. But, like, right. Like, you're working. Like, it makes sense that you don't come a lot. And she says, like, I have to pinch pennies to be able to afford to go. Like, it, it can't cost more than, like, $100 to to ride a horse. Like, what are you doing? Your sister's like, doing thousands. your hair for free. Right. Like, I it was confusing. I feel like but, this, this movie would have made more sense also if all the sisters lived in the same house and they, none of them yes. were married. And all the guys were trying to court the sisters and trying to get them to, like, yeah, get yeah. to a place where they could move out yeah. and be together. Them being also, married, it made no sense. Yeah. And also, like... Ray has already told you he's saving every single cent he's earning to buy a house. And you're going to do this man dirty and make him pay for these expensive horseback Horse riding, riding days? Like, really? <laughs> and if it was that expensive, he couldn't afford it. Right. Right. Well, he's not. Well, she should have questioned how much, how he could afford it. Obviously, he's getting it from her brother-in-law's. 
But they only were giving him three hundred dollars. <laughs> How much is the horse riding? <laughs> they gave him three hundred dollars. He said three hundred should be enough. I just want a blackboard right now, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm putting all, I'm putting the money on. Okay. So what is the average that a health inspector makes? How much does it cost to go for horseback riding? Because, like, just the like, math is not adding up here. Just that <laughs> meme of, like, numbers swirling around. Uh, well, yeah. that date and goes well. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, they all oddly seem like they're in the same tax bracket, even yeah. though they were all in different places in their lives, clearly. Like, how does Megan Good have a house? That was a house. That wasn't an apartment. Well, Daryl might be dumb, but he got him a good government job. I, you can say what you want about the Postal Service, but there's all sorts of, like, for for government officials, there's... Yeah, but where do they of, live? I don't know. LA. At California. Absolutely not. <laughs> Daryl's <laughs> mama left him the house. That's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> Or Eva eventually bought her own house and left baby sister with a family home. Who knows? I'm making up backstory as we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm taking Nothing a boat trip because this damn movie is hurting my brain. <laughs> so the date does go well. They talk. And so she's like, let's go do something you want to do. And so he takes her back to his house where he has a pool table and nothing else. <laughs> it's like dating in my 20s all over again. She does call him out like, you have no couch. And later in the movie, I do want to recognize that he does buy a couch, but that shit is a, it's not a full couch. It, it looks like a loveseat. Love seat. Well, if you're only one person, you don't. No, nah, really Jackie, come on. <laughs> you at least get one a uh, full size couch. Like it doesn't guess, have to be big. I guess I'm coming from the perspective of my brother in law only had a love seat when like <laughs> he was a bachelor by himself because that's all I needed was just for him. I don't know. Yeah, I guess um, you're right. So. <laughs> But Eva does, he, he does ask like about, because she does say, I wanted to be a horse trainer, but then my parents were killed in a car crash. And so I had to take care of my siblings. And so that was just became a fantasy. And then she goes on to say, <laughs> um, after they were okay, I just settled into my cushy life. How cushy is it if we can't afford horseback <laughs> riding? Yeah, yeah. I gotta keep coming back to this. <laughs> I just it shit. doesn't make sense. Well, maybe she shouldn't have said cushy, but she could have said comfortable. I mean, if she yeah. was working so hard and now, because she does say that she had to waitress as well as like mm -hmm. she found the job in the department she works in now. So maybe now being able to only have one job and just kind of relax a little bit. Cushy. That, yeah, that makes sense. But she doesn't give in to Ray asking her any more questions about it. Like yeah. she doesn't go into really why she doesn't go into having this dream or going after it. And she does ask him, like, what are your dreams? And it's almost as if he's really never thought about it. He's kind of just keeps moving. Now, the way that she calls him out on this and the way that she says it, I feel like she could have said it in a nicer way. But it's almost like, mm, I figured you out. I read that because he admits that he's an orphan. His mother gave him up as a child. And she's like, oh, well, that explains why you keep on moving around and you know, you don't want to stay in one place and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, he has said that he likes to, he has many different skills, but he doesn't say that like he likes to move around or whatever. I don't know. The way she said it was kind of just like, again, Eva, do you want to be with this man? Like, <laughs> why are you poking at his ego and his, not even his ego? Why are you poking at something that could be very hurtful and harmful for him? If he he's telling you something very vulnerable and you're literally making fun of him about it, essentially. Maybe she has a weird like self-preservation thing where like 
she's already convinced herself in the, her head that it, this can't possibly work out. So <laughs> as much as she likes him, she's looking for the thing that will like force him to leave. Or to feel like she has something over him or something, some yeah. sort of control and power over it, the whole situation. But I feel yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think she's just looking for something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I do like when they're talking about like him being an orphan and her losing her parents, like they do make the analogy of like, you have to build a bridge over the pain. That's how you get like move, move on with your life. So I did really like the, from this whole movie, that's the really the only thing that I was like, Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And like, for myself losing a parent like yeah that's what you do is like the pain's always going to be there you just build that bridge and sometimes like the bridge breaks a little bit and you fall in the river and then you pick yourself back up and mend it and keep going like i i like that analogy but yeah i i thought it was nice i just feel like she shit all over it yeah afterwards <laughs> yeah Agree to closing the night. Well, you know what? It, it, she probably just felt vulnerable and had to mm -hmm. figure something out to like change the mood because Ray again doesn't seem offended. It's just it is. Yeah. And he's so encouraging. He's like, You should be proud of yourself. You've taken care of your sisters. You have a career. But like, what did all that devotion cost you? And so then that's when we get the story of she was going to marry Lucius. Lucius? Lucius, all like every time she said his name, I just kept thinking of that fucking show Empire and thinking of Terrence Howard. I could not get him out of my head after she said I, Lucius. Yeah, I couldn't imagine a, a guy of his age really with the name Lucius, so it, it didn't feel. <laughs> I was like, they, feel right. they, they got really creative with that name. <laughs> but she did say that in the end, he kind of forced her to choose between her sisters and him and she chose her sisters because they were still young because age doesn't make sense in this movie right <laughs> again math was not the movie strong suit at all yeah but at this point michael just comes cramering into the house and is like yelling about money and then like he has to try and kind of backtrack like oh he plays pool with me blah 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 Raymond played but, it off pretty cool though like yeah. he didn't even get kind of disheveled from it yeah and then after Michael leaves she's like I know they set you up with me like she doesn't know about the money but she <laughs> knows that they were the ones who kind of brought Ray around and kind of right push and but that also means she's self-aware again of her being just awful in yes. the scenarios of these guys and her siblings so that sucks that she's doing it all on purpose and now eva has a man and so our the sisters don't know <laughs> how to process this information the way okay I'm ready to talk about this scene at the damn beauty shop the next day. All of a sudden, that? Eva is putting on real hardcore. I don't like business? Yeah. Which, and she started talking about you know, my business and all that. <laughs> yeah, that was a choice. <laughs> it was something. Apparently, getting dick is just changing your personality. She had like freaking crop top on, low rise pants. She's real relaxed, like she, she you know, like, slouching in the chair. She references that her punan might be a little moist because it's hot outside. It was weird. It was and everyone that. and everyone <laughs> is crowded around. Even the, the, these extras and that one Jamaican woman, woman that had but didn't look Jamaican at all. <laughs> <laughs> and they're Very, all just... like, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. And she reveals it to them and they all are excited for her because that's apparently what everybody was hoping for, for Eva. Uh, yeah. 
Because I'm sure they all said that lady needs to get laid. Yeah. It was the investment. (laughs) But we do get a montage of like everyone, all the couples are happy again. So it's like even Ray and all the sisters and their significant others because Eva is like chilled out so they could just live their lives for a bit. Yeah. Uh, but then the guys find out that Eva gets her Chicago job. Right. And so they're celebrating. But things take a turn because right. now the girls are all comparing their men to Ray. Ray this, Ray that, Ray and Eva, Ray and Eva say, and now they they have a new problem. Has A new problem has developed, essentially. Yes. And now Ray's got to go. And Ray has bought the house by this point. We see him buying the house. So he is now established in L.A. And Eva has been offered this job in Chicago. I just want Ray to do this commercial real quick where he's like, and you too can join this housing program, 5K, and that house will be yours. (laughs) That's all you need to do. Right. All you need to do. So now we see Eva. She is at the mayor's dinner Earlier on, Ray randomly had a meeting with the mayor to sell him, do a meat meat presentation. presentation. (laughs) Love it. And now we're at the mayor's dinner. Ray was supposed to join her, but is not there. So she's by herself. But Lucius walks in. He has a wife. She's like, look at our kids. Oh, you're the love of his life. Like, so fucking awkward. We've got to talk about the Kenya Moore of it all. <laughs> we, so I love watching Real Housewives of Atlanta and seeing Kenya talk so much shit. And she talks, I, I, I think it was when Kim Fields was on the show and she was talking shit about like Kim Fields being an actor and stuff like that. And I'm like, woman, what you've done in acting doesn't even compare to what Kim has done like not even in the slightest no these are the only kind of roles I've ever seen Kenya Moore do she she basically played the same person in Waiting to Exhale yeah like just some woman at that was at a bar date thing and just kind of comes up and confronts another woman that's it that's all I've ever seen Kenya Moore play she plays herself yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> and also I just I feel like she looks kind of different in this movie like she, she did also I, just a quick note kenya moore's in the film did anybody notice terry cruz was in the movie yes and he didn't have any lines not a line but Where i saw terry that cruz? he was as a bartender i saw that crinkly for i can spot that crinkly forehead anywhere yes i saw yeah he just turns around kind of like lifts his eyebrows and then he's gone yeah but so yeah but, but just having him and kenya moore is I'm like, all right, all right, I see what you're trying to do. Um, and I do have to speak about Dorian Gregory because I don't care what role this man is in. He is Daryl from Charmed for me every time. I yeah. don't see anything else. So it was very weird to see him in this role and also have a speaking part because they always sidelined him so much on that show. With a name like Lucius. With Lucius, yes. Does not fit. Does not fit him at all. So, yeah, it's super weird because, like, obviously these two were supposed to be together after high school, so 18. So now they are got to be in their 30s, 20s, late 20s, 30s. Yeah. And the way... Age. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. But the way that they're talking the way he talks to her is like, he doesn't even try to pretend that he didn't get butt hurt by her, you know, like, yeah, it's super weird. And then his wife goes in, like, these are not the things you would do to try to like get back an ex if you, or if you're insecure about your husband's ex, like you would not play it this way. Yeah. But it's, it's, no, I, I don't know why I thought this scene would make sense and everything else hasn't. So whatever. No, but it was, but it was, a, it, it, it was just a good scene in the sense that it allowed LL Cool J to come in and save the day at the exact right time. Right. And 
<laughs> and introduce her to the man just so that they could. And I don't know what Lucius really did that he deserved all of that. Like he came in with so much aggression in theory and, and, and Kenya more especially. But my thing is, I don't know what happened between them where it right. was so, where, why, where, why is there this animosity? Y'all were in high school. Who cares? Yeah. I feel like this, this, the movie maybe should have started with Lucius, like a scene back in the day of Lucius decimating Eva's heart. So that when we get to the scene, it actually would have been like more meaty for us as the viewer to be like, yeah, get it. You know, like Hitch where they right. show him just like so devastated by someone that right. he just connects. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you need something to, a, a film needs to establish the world that we're in. And the thing is this film wasn't about Lucius at all. And they talked about him occasionally, but the thing is you could not hear that when you're watching mm -hmm. the film, it's easy to not notice that stuff. And then when he does pop up, it's like, Oh, okay. I, I get it. But I don't know how it all ties in together. Right. So after this scene is when they go back to the house and they kind of like, well, well so, she meets so the mayor. Ray, sh Ray shows up. Right. And Lucius is like assistant to the mayor. He just got the job. So he's like trying to introduce the mayor, like trying to be a badass. And Ray's like, oh, yeah, Mr. Mayor. So nice right. to you. He's like, hey, Ray, how's it going? Like, you're welcome anytime <laughs> type thing. And so kind of puts Lucius in his place. And that turns Eva on. <laughs> Can we talk about the dip, the double dip that we get? So they go, they're dancing. And Eva always just has these random facts that she likes to throw out there. And so she, she likes statistics. She does. <laughs> so Ray dips her and then she dips him. But the struggle is real. It looks like Gabrielle was trying for her dear life not to drop LL at all um, she cut the back of his head so hard <laughs> it was like when you hold a newborn that's how she was holding him <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then they go back to her house and they are trying to not like they're getting hot and heavy on the love seat but i think now ray's feeling guilty so he doesn't he, he like tries to slow things down and so she leaves and goes back to her house. And I guess he just couldn't cool his jets. He's like, I'm just going to do this. And so they go back to her house and that's when they finally get it in. So now fast forward to the montage of them all happy. And now the guys are mad because the girls are comparing their relationships to Ray and Eva's. And now the guys are like, we got to figure something out. Cause this is, well, and they go. do mention that they're dissolving the Dandridge Fund and they're just going to give it all to Eva because she's finally happy and, like, I'm like <laughs> she already has she a needs house. <laughs> she has a good job. Like, why does she need this money? Question. Horseback riding, Jackie. Well, maybe. But, yeah. but they literally said, but well, Eva has a man now, so she needs to. <laughs> yeah. That's the catalyst. But it didn't matter that the other sister had a man and Eva was like, no, we're not touching the fun. Right. Or why not just give it to her before all this should happen? Like, yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, so know. now, and, and we see Ray in the choir because now he is a church man. He's so happy with Eva. <laughs> and then Ray gets a promotion. He, his boss asks him to run the meat company. So he's starting that next week. And he says, like, it, it's because of Eva that he realized he needs to, like, think about his future and, like, think about what he wants and go for <laughs> things that will kind of improve his lot in life. And she says that he taught her how to trust again. And then we get to the interrogation scene where the three guys catch up with Ray and they're just like, what the fuck is going on? Um, the girl's like, you like her or something? Yeah. And they're trying to figure out like, maybe she's laying it down in sex or whatever. Well, they call him out on having sex with her, which seems to be something that they did specify. Maybe they didn't want him to do like to go that far. They just wanted her to fall in love. So I guess that's the only good thing 
And even... they want her him now because she's been offered the job. They want him to dump her so that she'll leave. Right. And he says he can't. And so then they're like, okay. And they, they, they kidnap him. Yeah, and Ray did did say that he thinks he might be falling in love with Eva, and that's when they're like, "Oh fuck, oh he's gone too far." (laughs) And so they nine to five his ass essentially. If you ever seen that movie, it's literally very similar the the chain get up situation. Yeah, but they don't do a fucking good job because. They leave the key on the floor? Question mark. What is no, that? It was on the a floor? bobby pin. It was it was a bobby pin. Yeah, I don't bobby know why. Pins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Why was there a bobby pin? <laughs> where um, was that? Like, where did they put him? <laughs> it was a warehouse that Daryl knew about because it was on his route for delivery. Of course, it is. I thought it would have made more sense if Michael knew where it was. Like we just we just did Plus a shakedown. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, co- a coke house or something. I don't know, yeah. but like. <laughs> Meanwhile, they go to the salon and tell everyone <laughs> this is awful. a fake police report that. Uh, Ray was killed in a car accident. Eva faints. Like, everyone is, like, crying, so upset. How fucked up is it? Not only do they fake this man's death, but the way he dies is the way their parents die. Like, what's wrong with you? I could never forgive these men. Straight to deal. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, shouldn't he lose his job as a cop for doing that? Yes. yes. And none of them should stay with these men who no. are so quick to manipulate their sister and have her go through this traumatic experience that she's already been through once. All of them, because they all yes. love Ray now, too. And first of all, do you, I mean, unless the church did it for free, do you know how much of funeral costs there was a coffin up there even though they said he had to be quickly cremated because of the extent of his injuries in the car accident like the big picture of his bald head like there was there were flowers like also, that was an expensive ploy how yes long? eva went to the trouble of getting a singer right <laughs> How and they long? actually, oh, go ahead. Sorry, and they, I was just saying, and they actually had the singer come out and she sang this really sad song in this movie, <laughs> right? How long did it take for him to get out? Because they lock him up, he seems to see the bobby pin thing right away, and then there's a funeral. Like, was this funeral rapid or they was there three a day? days? Three days, okay, three days, yeah. So I don't know if they had him in the box truck for a while till they figured out where to put. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Again, math time's not working again. Mm. I do like that they came up with an excuse to get LL Cool J to not be in pants. Wasn't uh, hating on that. Wasn't mad about that. <laughs> yeah, they used them to get the pop bobby pin. Right. So he like literally has this like beautiful song is playing and and Eva is eulogizing him like bust <laughs> through the doors and and he's like it was them and they're like wasn't us and then Tim was like it was us. <laughs> okay, here's another math question. Could Gabrielle Union actually knock out LL Cool J? I would say so. What? Really? She's, she's well, maybe Eva could. <laughs> full of rage. Yeah. I, I mean, I would have saw a slap maybe, but like a full on hit for him to fall. I was a little shocked by that one. Yes, because he does confess that he was paid to go out with her. I did the math conversion because he was paid $5,000 in 2003. That would have been $7,952. Which is still Still not enough. enough. (laughs) Your face is priceless. I'm like, 
I was like, I thought you were gonna say like ten thousand or something. No. Like it was seven thousand. Yeah, oh, okay, so he got like maybe, two thousand more. Yeah, like the just shy of eight thousand dollars. Like not enough for all of this. And now he's been kidnapped. His death has been faked. Like. This is not what Ray signed up for. He just wanted to be in the Playa Hall of Fame. <laughs> this is so fucked up. I, I just can't. Like, when I rewatched this, I could not remember how all this stuff went down. But rewatching, I was like, oh my God. This is horrible yeah yes it's really bad and and i think if the film took a little bit more of an absurd look or take of this entire situation this part wouldn't be so strange but it's like it's too uh, the film has so many elements that are grounded in reality that once you put that in there it's like okay but now i'm thinking about it like if this really happened because you have this story. I don't know. It just, it feels like it needed to be a little bit more absurd of a film for us to buy into that. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, now Eva's at her goodbye party. She has accepted the job in Chicago. Ray shows up. He still has feelings for her. <laughs> He's like, oh, I told you. I know I did all these things, but I think we still got a chance. What do I you love think? you. <laughs> I'm going to show up at your job outside, knocking on the window. And she Wait, does say, a sign. So she does say that he believes love is a choice. He earned his choice, but he stole hers from her, which is not like money or not. He saw her ripping into that manager man and that's what made him like her it wasn't the money he didn't even go on one date with her and then decide he liked her like it was independent of them paying her yeah but she doesn't know that and ever, it doesn't matter like our entire relationship is based on a lie you know you're the type of man that would take money to con a woman essentially like his intentions weren't to get the money and like her and really take it seriously. It was, I'm going to make you, I'm going to break up with you and hurt you so that you'll leave. That was the main goal. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, I couldn't trust you after doing that. You know what I mean? Like, I can't trust this guy. Yeah. So then this is the scene that we were talking about earlier where Eva apologizes to all of the significant others. <laughs> Which is the scene behind me. <laughs> because she's been sabotaging the whole time. Ma'am, they kidnapped someone <laughs> and held him for three days, faked a funeral, faked a death, and, like, made you go through, like, relive trauma. Like, what the actual fuck yeah and they got everything they wanted anyway they did yeah because like as soon as she says oh come in they all love you one of them's legitimately asking for sex yes and that and dumbass then, Michael proposes finally now that he knows the dandridge fund is available because they right. split it oh. trash so now we see Eva in her new job in Chicago and she's like leaving the, like she comes out of the elevators and there's just Ray on a white horse in the middle of the lobby of like, it looks like a historical building. Like it's marble floors. Like what she, what are we doing, Ray? And that horse looks highly uncomfortable. I feel like that where they are, is that the train station in los angeles i, I think be, possibly i don't I could I'm be not wrong. Sure exactly I, I don't know exactly where it is but i know that if you come on my first day at my new job <laughs> with a horse in the middle of the building no i'm not talking to you <laughs> like, i don't know this man <laughs> Also, I'm hoping this is a new horse because you didn't have money before, but now you have the money to take a horse from L.A. to Chicago. 
It is a new horse because I believe the horse she was riding before wasn't it black? I, could I thought it was. It up. I thought it was white. I don't know. Mm. I Regardless, don't know. <laughs> there's a horse in the lobby, right? <clears throat> and then they go outside, and she's like, "I cannot be bought." He's like, "Well, I also bought the stables. I sold the house I bought in L.A. I bought a horse in some stables. I quit my job, and." He says, I'm not leaving because I can't live without you. And then, like, these two other, like, horse cops come up and they're like, ma'am, is this your animal? And, <laughs> and then she's just like, yes, it is fine. This man, so is the stables his job now? And does it have a house? Because where is he living? I, I would assume so. And then, like, yeah, you can rent out. Like, uh, you could just have stables, rent out the, the stalls, and then, like, take care of the horses, and that could be your business. People pay a lot of money for that. I That's what he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the best I can guess. <laughs> uh, unless he found a meat company to work at in Chicago. <laughs> who knows but they do right off into the sunset on the horse mm -hmm. and that is deliver us from eva but no, there is a scene an the end crash. scene <laughs> which is ridiculous and highly unnecessary because in the beauty shop there is this character telly who is a gay man who does hair this end scene is Telly standing outside talking to his girlfriend in a regular voice and, and his reasoning for playing gay is because no one is going to hire a straight hairdresser and he has to earn enough money to open his own shop. Is there another movie that is like a spinoff of this called The Salon? I don't think the salon is a spinoff, but there is a movie. The salon. <laughs> there, there was the salon hair show and beauty show. Right. So. I I remember all of them, but I'm trying to because I it's thought Vivica can, Fox is in it. Yeah, I, I thought that movie had Kim in it as well. Royale but, Watkins, the actor. It does. It does have Kim Whitley in it as well. So I got confused when I saw the scene and I was just like, oh, and guess what? Terrence Howard is also in the salon. So me thinking about him the whole time in this movie, I can just rewatch that one. That is, is that, in, and it's in our time frame. So buckle up, Jackie. We'll have to do it one day. <laughs> oh boy. We did it, y'all. We did it. Here we are. <laughs> don't feel good about it. I don't. It's what done. A, what a film. What a film. <laughs> Before we dive in to our reviews, why don't you tell everybody how they can find you on social again? You can find me on Instagram and on TikTok at the Anwar Ali, T H E A N W A R A L I. And you can find us at No More Late Fees at Instagram. Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay, Anwar, what is your rating? <laughs> this is the same day, Renzo. Keep it real. Keep it real. I saw it. I'm going to take it back. <laughs> Jackie? Same. It's the same day, Randall. <laughs> they, I, as much as I love LL Cool J, like, I can't. <laughs> it's going to be a would buy it again for me, y'all. I just feel like it was a lot of fun, you know? That's a lie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> same day all the way. I would like to go back in time. There was a point in this movie where I had to press pause and said, Jesus, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I it was... felt like this movie was like four hours long. <laughs> I, I would pause it and be like, I'm only 15 minutes in. <laughs> like, how? I've been watching this for an hour and a half. 
And it's so long because it's an hour and 40 something minutes anyway, which is longer than it needed to be in the first place. Yes. I mean, this is a cool 80 minute movie. <laughs> Two hours with commercials. Take like, out the filler. <laughs> it just sucks because, like, how did Gabrielle Union, how is she in the best adaptation of Taming of the Shrew and the worst adaptation of Taming of the Shrew? How? How do you do Well, be Well, because in one, she only had, like, three lines. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible? I know you can get overwhelmed. <laughs> But is it possible to get whelmed? <laughs> is it possible to get whelmed? Just whelmed? Yeah, I guess you're right. Couldn't fuck up two lines. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's not a film that was clear about what it wanted to be. And it feels like a very low budget endeavor. And not low budget in that it's like, it doesn't feel like it belongs on Tubi low budget like they just didn't have any money but it feels like in comparison to a lot of films in the same era that were romantic comedies about black people it just pales in comparison yeah and it's weird because i i don't think i thought that low of it in my brain before we we watched it but now i'm like oh lord this one got away this one got away with money it didn't have a bud a good budget, but it got people went to see it. Mm -hmm. No, no, and I and I swear, like I didn't think it was. I don't remember it being this this, this bad. Like I, <laughs> I, 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 like I knew it was. I I didn't necessarily when I was watching it before. I didn't even completely one hundred percent see how problematic it was. Mm -hmm. Um, but even then, I knew that there were elements that were problematic. I, but I just didn't know the movie was so shoddily put together. Yeah. Like, it <laughs> is so cheap. Like, like they just, they had three montage scenes that had no purpose. <laughs> yep. I think the fact that we're able to evaluate it now is growth. <laughs> <laughs> it shows how much growth. we've grown. Yes. Because clearly... <laughs> Why what? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you have opinions about this movie, feel free to hit us up at our quick drop, 909-601-6653-909601 and MLF. You can spot us at the Twitters or leave a voicemail at our Anchor FM account and you can be featured on a future episode. Well, we also have a birthday shout out. Whose birthday Hi. is it, Jackie? It's Stephanie's birthday. Yay. We adore Stephanie. If you don't know who she is, go check out our Selena episode. And she's just a fantastic friend and supporter of the podcast. And we love you so much. Happy birthday. Thank you for being one of our Patreon besties. If you want to be a Patreon bestie and get a birthday shout out, please head to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com backslash no more late fees. And as always, be kind and rewind.